Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. I thought I had the perfect life until I walked in on my husband and best friend together. Now I'm planning my revenge. I always thought I had a perfect life. I was a stay-at-home mom with two beautiful children, a loving husband, and a best friend who was practically a sister to me. My days were filled with school runs, grocery shopping, and play dates with other moms in the neighborhood. I had a routine that I followed every day and I was content with my life. My husband, John, was a successful businessman. He worked long hours and traveled frequently for work but he always made sure to call and check in on us when he was away. We had been married for 10 years and our relationship was rock solid. Or so I thought. My best friend, Lisa, was my partner in crime. We had known each other since we were in diapers and we did everything together. We took our kids to the park, went shopping, and even went on vacation together. She was married to a man named Mike who was also a good friend of John's. The four of us would often get together for dinner parties and game nights. I never suspected anything was wrong. John was always affectionate with me, and Lisa was always there for me when I needed her. I trusted them completely. That was until I found out the truth. I came home early from a trip to the grocery store one day and walked in on John and Lisa in the middle of their act. They were so shocked to see me that they didn't even have a chance to deny it. At first, I was in denial. I couldn't believe what I had just seen. My mind raced as I tried to make sense of what was happening. But as the reality of the situation set in, I felt a deep sense of betrayal. How could they do this to me? I had given them my trust and they had violated it in the worst possible way. That's when the anger started to creep in. I wasn't going to let them get away with this. I was going to make them pay for what they had done to me. As I tried to process the news of the affair, I began to think back on all the times John and Lisa had spent together. Had there been signs that I missed? Had they been sneaking around behind my back for months or even years? I couldn't believe how blind I had been. I had always prided myself on being a good wife and mother. I cooked dinner every night, kept the house clean, made sure the kids were taken care of. But all that hard work seemed meaningless now that I knew the truth. I tried to confront John and Lisa, but they were both in shock and didn't have much to say. John kept apologizing and saying he didn't know what had come over him. Lisa just stared at the ground and refused to meet my eyes. I knew I had to do something, but I wasn't sure what. Should I forgive them and try to move on? Or should I leave John and start a new life without him? I was in shock. I walked back down and unpacked the groceries. As I lay in bed that night, I couldn't stop thinking about the affair. The images of John and Lisa together burned into my mind and I couldn't shake the feeling of betrayal. I knew I couldn't forgive them. Not yet. I needed time to figure out what I wanted to do. The next few days were a blur. I went through the motions of my daily routine, but my mind was elsewhere. I spent hours scrolling through social media trying to distract myself from the pain. But the more I thought about the affair, the angrier I became. John and Lisa had both betrayed me in the worst way possible. They had taken advantage of my trust and thrown our whole lives into chaos. I knew I couldn't just let it go. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, and couldn't think straight. Every time I looked at John, all I could see was them together laughing behind my back and lying to my face. I felt like I had been living in a bubble, completely unaware of the reality of my own life. I started to piece together the clues that had been right in front of me all along. The long hours at work, the frequent business trips, the sudden increase in phone calls and text messages. I had been so naive, so trusting. I felt like a fool. I began to plan my revenge meticulously, piece by piece. It was like putting together a puzzle, and I had to be careful not to miss anything. I knew that I needed to be smart about it, to play the long game, and to make sure that I had enough evidence to take them down once and for all. The first thing I did was to start gathering evidence. I started with their text messages, which I had access to because my husband and I shared a phone plan. I installed a spyware program that allowed me to monitor their conversations without them knowing. I also set up hidden cameras in our house, and I recorded their phone conversations when they were in the same room as me. One message that my so-called BF sent was that she is a stay-at-home mom and even if we continue she won't know. You know you like it. I couldn't react even if I wanted to. I knew that I needed to be patient to wait for the right moment to strike but it was hard. Every day I was consumed by anger and hurt and I wanted nothing more than to confront them and make them pay but I knew that I couldn't do that. I had to be smart and I had to play the long game. As the days turned into weeks and then months, I continued to gather evidence. I took pictures of them together, recorded their conversations, and made sure to document every move they made. I knew that I needed to be careful not to raise any suspicion, so I kept everything hidden and secretive. Finally, I had enough evidence to take them down. I even had a recording of them confessing to their affair. I knew that it was time to make my move. I contacted a lawyer and filed for divorce. I also made sure to have all of the evidence I had gathered ready to present to the court. I wanted to make sure that my husband would pay for what he had done, 
and that Lisa would be held accountable for her role in the affair. But I wasn't done yet. I wanted everyone to know what they had done to me. So I contacted a media person and gave them all of the evidence I had gathered. I wanted my story to be told and I wanted my husband and Lisa to be publicly shamed for what they had done. It wasn't long before my story was all over the news. My husband and Lisa were exposed and their reputations were ruined. They lost everything they had worked so hard for and they were both forced to start over from scratch. Update 1. One month later, when news of my husband's affair with my best friend broke, it wasn't just John, Lisa, and Mike who were affected. My in-laws, my parents, and our family friends all reached out to me, offering their support and sympathy. At first, I was hesitant to talk to anyone. I felt embarrassed and ashamed like I had somehow failed as a wife and mother. But as the days went on, I realized that I couldn't keep everything bottled up inside. My in-laws were the first to contact me. They were devastated by what had happened, and they wanted to make sure that I was okay. My mother-in-law cried on the phone as she told me how much she loved me and how she couldn't believe that her son would do something like this. My parents were equally shocked and upset. They came over to my house with food and flowers, and they stayed with me for a few days to make sure that I was taking care of myself. They told me that they were proud of me for being strong and that they would always be there for me. Our family friends also reached out to me. They offered words of encouragement and support, and they shared their own stories of heartbreak and betrayal. It was comforting to know that I wasn't alone and that there were people who understood what I was going through. But even with all of their support, I still felt lost and alone. It was hard to imagine a future without my husband, and it was even harder to imagine how I would ever be able to trust anyone again. Update 2. Eight months later. After my husband's affair with Lisa was exposed, it wasn't long before her husband Mike contacted me. He told me that he had no idea that his wife was cheating on him with my husband and that he was devastated by the news. We talked for a long time and I could hear the pain in his voice. He told me how he had loved Lisa so much and how he had trusted her completely. He said that he felt like his whole world had been turned upside down and that he didn't know how he was going to move on from this. I could relate to what he was going through and I tried my best to comfort him. I told him that I understood how he was feeling and that I was there for him if he needed anything. We kept in touch over the next few weeks. Eventually we met up in person, it was awkward at first, but we soon fell into an easy conversation. We talked about our marriages and how we had both been betrayed by the people we loved. We also talked about our kids and how they were dealing with everything that had happened. As we talked, I realized that Mike was a good man. He was kind, thoughtful, and caring, and he didn't deserve to be hurt like this. I could tell that he was still in love with Lisa, but he knew that he could never go back to her after what she had done. Over time, Mike and I grew closer. We started going on walks together and we would talk for hours about everything and anything. I found myself looking forward to seeing him and I could tell that he felt the same way. Eventually, we both admitted to having feelings for each other. It was scary and confusing, but we knew that we couldn't deny what we were feeling. We've decided not to take it further yet. It could just be us bonding over the trauma and I need to stand on my own two feet before I get into another relationship. NTA this is why I'm so skeptical about having girl best friends. This has happened to me before, but I was in high school, not married in a relationship of 10 years with kids. I feel so damn bad for the OP. Imagine walking in on your husband and Beth doing it and then walking down and unpacking groceries. OP felt dead. She was in shock and couldn't even process the pain. What type of assholes are they? This made my blood boil. Good on her for exposing them publicly. They deserved it. Girl. I ain't true. If I were you, I would get with Mike just to get more revenge, but you seem to have developed a connection with him. And the fact that you're still keeping your emotions at bay says a lot about you. Your ex-husband and an ex-best friend are the worst types of people. They can rot together now. Next story. So in my neighborhood, the houses are built sort of like a sandwich. So there is my house, my driveway, a shared hedge fence, my neighbor's driveway, and then his house. I hope that is clear. My neighbor has two kids, each of whom have their own car. So they have four cars and my family has two. There is no street parking. Our driveways lead to detached garages. His kid has the habit of parking in my driveway when I'm not home. He can park between our houses and just walk to his side entrance. I am sort of done asking him not to do this, but I'm not calling bylaw enforcement or towing him. I didn't want grief in the neighborhood. Yesterday, he did it again, so I parked behind him and went for a bike ride. We're enjoying a beautiful Indian summer. When I got back, I noticed that the hedge was torn up. It was kind of hard to miss. I guess what happened is after he got home, everyone else left. I have no idea why he didn't call a cab or an Uber. What he did instead is drive over the hedge between our driveways. These aren't little raspberry brambles. These are 30-year-old hedges. 
Anyway, his dad is sitting there looking at the hedge. He asks me if I know what happened. I said, come over for a beer and we can check my surveillance. So now the kid is choked because he has to pay to replace the hedge and his car is all scratched up. I guess he had been warned he would be fired if he was late for work again. So the kid thinks I'm the asshole for blocking him in on purpose, which I guess I sort of did. But the consequences were completely unintended. I was planning on moving the car to let them out when I got home. He could have called an Uber hell, he could have called in sick. Dude, this is excellent. I'm going to have to learn to use techniques like this when dealing with similar situations. Neighbors kids jumping over our shared front yard destroying newly laid out landscaping. When this happens again, which I expect it will this coming spring, and neighbor asks what happened, my response, please come over for some tea and we'll check my exterior camera. Better than blaming her kids outright and creating tension. Thank you and OPNTI at all. It sounds like you have asked them not to park in your driveway on more than one occasion, and they still do. NT at the only way you could possibly be TA is if you had never asked them not to park there. Their car was running. Someone was inside the vehicle and said to you, we'll just be a moment and you parked there anyway and left. And even then, it's your driveway so you can do what you want. If you don't want to get blocked into a parking space that doesn't belong to you, don't park there. It's not hard. Next story. I'm a 45-year-old mom of 10 and 2-year-old girls. My best friend, 47, male, lives next door to us. I've been best friends with him for 20 years now and my husband thinks of him as a brother. My girls love him like an uncle. Anyway, a few days ago I took my girls to McDonald's for a happy meal. We decided to eat at home so I sat them up at the dinner table with their food. My toddler loves throwing her food to the dogs and she did this. I scolded her, told her not to do that, and it could make the puppy sick and the food was for her tummy, not the dogs. Well, my toddler started crying. My best friend then started babying her, telling her it was okay, just basically telling her the opposite of what I told her. I politely asked my friend to stop babying her after I scolded her and she needs to learn to stop throwing food or giving it to the dogs. He then tells me that what I've done can cause serious issues with her. He said that she will relate food with getting in trouble, and it could cause her to be anorexic when she gets older. I told him that she was my child. I know her better than anyone and she was crying because she can't give her food to the dogs. He told me that I needed to pick up a freaking book and read up on how to raise kids. Well, I kind of snapped. I told him that he has zero right telling me how to raise my kids when he didn't raise his own. He left his kids in a different state with their mother, refused to provide any type of financial support, and even quit a job when child support started being garnished from his checks. My kids are my world. I do not abuse or mistreat them in any way, but I do expect my kids to be well-mannered, and they are. I'm not trying to raise spoiled little entitled assholes. I haven't talked to this friend in three to four days because of this. He thinks I went too far calling him out about his own parenting, but I don't think I did. I could be wrong, though. I don't feel bad about what I told him. Ada. Update. I don't know how to do an official update or anything, so I just edited my original to include an update. Thank you, everyone. Sometimes you just need to hear the words of a stranger. I've read every single comment, and I thank each of you for taking the time to read and respond. Yes, I've been friends with this person for 20 years, but I've only been a parent for 10. I'll gladly trash the friendship when it comes to my kids. Gladly. Especially if this friendship will affect my kids in any type of negative way. My girls have both parents and don't need someone from the outside coming in and reprimanding me for how I discipline my kids when that person has been no kind of parent himself. All of your comments and responses have made me really think about my friend and how he is. He is a freaking narcissistic asshole that acts like a freaking baby when he doesn't get what he wants. I guess I've just ignored it for the last 10 years because I've had my kids to worry about. I failed to notice how clingy he's gotten over the last 10 years. How much he acts like a child. Worse than my kids. When he doesn't get his way or how he wants or expects me to basically beg him to go places with us. For example, if we're going out to eat, we will invite him. When he declines, we go on about our business and go out to eat. While we are out, he will text me and say he's going to come with us, and after I tell him we have already left, he will tell me that I should have asked him again just to make sure he didn't want to go. Or shit like if we plan a family activity, he'll be like, tell me what time we're leaving. When I tell him that it's just us and the girls going, he will get pissy and go home, won't talk to me for a few days. It's really childish shit. When I sit and think about it, it actually feels like I've got three kids. Just one of them is a nearly 50-year-old man. Yes, time to reevaluate this friendship. I'm sitting on my bed typing this, and I feel so freaking used and so blind. Stupid. Like a total freaking dumbass. Like a freaking idiot. There's more to this and why I feel like this that I won't post right here. Not the right sub for it. Anyway, 
Thank you, kind strangers of Reddit, for making me open my eyes and not judging me too harshly, even though I needed it. Thanks again, people, for making my blind ass open my eyes. He is no threat or danger to my kids whatsoever, but other things, nothing harmful, dangerous, or threatening to my kids or anyone else. Just how he's been using us for a while now and we were too blind to see it or just chose to ignore it. It's sad to say I do believe this friendship has run its course. Thank you again. NTA for this situation, you are parenting your child. That being said, you're calling a man who abandoned his children physically and financially a great guy makes me wonder your ability to judge another's character. Why you would want someone with next to none around your children, which does make you a bit of an AH. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.